I have a survey question for you. It is time for a survey, and I would really, really love for you guys to answer, even if it's just simply shooting me an email, shooting me a direct message that says yes or no. I really would love to hear from you. I have thousands and thousands of people that listen to this podcast. I would really appreciate taking a moment to get thousands and thousands of emails saying yes or no. Would you participate in a show that was done live where you could comment, interact, and join in on the conversation while the show is being recorded. Not specifically HTBT, which this is HTBT, How to Build a Tent, welcome to the show. But would you like to interact and talk and put in your two cents and have the host responding live during the show. So that's what, just simple, yes or no. Or you can elaborate more if you would like, please. I want to get thousands and thousands of emails and direct messages on this. I'll take you a few minutes. You can email me, matt at howtobuildatent.com, matt at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on the social media sites. You can click the links in the show notes and direct message me, any of those things. I just wanna know, would that be something you were interested in? My name is Matt Williams. If I didn't already say that, this is How to Build a Tent, the podcast on how to make you successful. Thank you for joining the show. I hope you are blessed by the show, just as I am blessed to do the show and help you guys out. Be successful in your businesses, your startups, your financial endeavors, your investing, whatever it is. If you have not already joined the Fight Laugh Feast Network, you should go check out on Facebook, David or Chocolate Knox, as a lot of you know from Cross Politic, put on his page a Facebook Live of one of the Toby's commentaries on Proverbs. It is fantastic. I would highly recommend you go read that and then go sign up at fightlifefeast.com. Use HTBT in the memo field to get a 15 ounce coffee mug, which you will love. It towers all the rest of the mugs and it holds plenty of coffee. But most of all, you'll be coming alongside of us to proclaim the Lordship of Jesus. I appreciate every single one of you who has already signed up and helped support us and keep this show on the air, keep this network going as we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life. If you have a startup, if you have a business, don't forget, you can email me. And as long as it's not a scam, as long as it's not something fishy, I will give you a shout out. I'll give you free advertising. You just can't beat free advertising. So go over and check that out. All right, today, I'm first going to talk about an example of somebody using their success to proclaim the gospel to further the lordship of Jesus, and that's Drew Brees. I don't know if you've seen this. I was reading this in the Faith Wire article, which is, I really kind of, I really do like Faith Wire a lot, and that's not just because they stream some of uh, the shows on this network, not mine. So Faith Wire, wink, wink. You need to get up, you need to get on that. Faith Wire needs a business show. Uh, Drew's Breeze is getting criticized for joining Focus on the Family, which is a network program James Dobson I grew up with as a kid, and I love it. Focus on the Family. He's getting crap. He's getting pushback because he is partnering with them to promote bringing your Bible to school day. And I bring this up for two reasons. One, it's another proof. It's more evidence that the left hates the family. They don't want you to focus on the family. They want to focus on destroying the family. And they don't want anybody who's upholding Christian family values, which is what blesses a community, which blesses the people in the family, which blesses the people around them. They want to destroy it. And they don't want anyone else to be around them either. And Drew Brees, a Christian, is promoting it, helping, has a 22-second video about bringing your Bible to school day. Now, a few things. One is I don't think we should be using this time to promote bringing your Bible to school. I think we should be getting our kids out of school. If you want to be a teacher in a public school, then more power to you. I think it's great to have Christian teachers in public schools. I don't think your kids should be in public schools because they are being indoctrinated, they're being discipled away from Christ. You don't ever you would never send your kid to a cult to be taught a cultish 
religion or belief. You would never send them to a Buddhist, a Mormon. You would never send them to any of these other religions that go to church because they would be discipled in that. I don't know why people, Christians don't understand that's the same thing we do, except it's not once a week. It's five times a week when we send them to public schools. They're teaching them humanism. They're teaching them evolution. They're teaching them to hate God, to hate the family, and not focus on the family. And the second reason I wanted to bring this up is because just because you're successful, it doesn't mean you're not going to get pushback. And Drew Brees needs our support. He needs our prayers. But also, I want you to remember that there's not some certain point of success that you're going to obtain that is going to exempt you from critique. And I just want you to be expecting it and be okay with it because remember, if God is for us, who can be against us? Not that no one's going to be against us, but who is even worth considering being an obstacle when we have God on our side? The next thing I want to talk about just bugs me. It really bugs me. And I'm going to try to put some logic behind this from a business perspective. But honestly, it more emotionally bothers me than anything else. And I'm talking about iPhones, Apple to be specific. I am just so bummed about this company. I have been such an Apple fan for a long time, ever since my friends got me to convert from Microsoft to Apple. But ever since Steve Jobs died, the company has just almost lost its way. It's not as innovative anymore. It comes out with bugs. Bugs never used to exist or they were so small that they had uh, Apple had a reputation of flawlessness, of perfection. They were the example of kingdom come, like no sin. It was just a perfect place. We were we were turning our swords into plowshares. We were we were beating our hooks to you know, it was perfect. Now, obviously, I'm over-exaggerating. And this was their reputation, though, that they were a product that you could have, a high-end product, and you'd pay for it. You'd pay for this high-end product that would excel, that would exceed your expectations. And one of the new strategies they're doing, besides not innovating anymore, and besides coming out with bugs and recalls and things of that, to that nature, is they're coming out with a cheap iPhone. They've done this twice. Now, they're doing it again, they think it's going to be modeled off of the iPhone 8 from what I've read. But they did it before in 2016 with what I believe was the iPhone SE. And basically it was the iPhone 4S. And this is what I don't like about this. Is that it is going against everything your brand stands for by coming out with a low-end product that is outdated. It's outdated. If... And see, when you have Apple products, part of the identity that comes with it, part of the values that their customers aligns with is this high end, exclusive arrogance. Like you get looked down on if you don't have earbuds in your ear listening to your brand new iPhone and having your Mac in your satchel or whatever most (laughs) iPhone uh, or not iPhone, Apple customers wear. And I, I'm making fun of myself, too, because I'm a big Apple person, too. And I look down at people condescendingly all the time with their little uh, Mac ta- or not with their uh, PC tablets. Ugh, ugh. But coming out with this low end product, it hurts the brand. You can't be snooty to people when they're selling a cheap version that has the same brand logo, the same. There's they're part of our group and they get it in for half the price. That's not the same. That's not what we grew up with in Apple. And I'm I'm kind of overdoing it just to, to really make this point that your brand is important and the products you bring out and the prices that you set them at is going to impact your brand and it can have devastating effects. Now, Apple will sell older phones and maybe that's a strategy that they should be doing instead. I understand what they're doing. They're trying to increase sales because fewer and fewer people are going to spend $1,000 on a new iPhone. Yep, that's how much they cost. They're $1,000. Fewer and fewer people are doing that. And so they need to find ways to generate revenue because they're a publicly traded company and they need to grow their um, PE ratios and they need to grow their income and their revenues and all those good things but there's got to be a better way to do it. That's not going to damage your brand. And you got to think about this as a business person, as somebody who's leading a department is there's second and third, fourth effects to things besides just 
make, making more iPhone cells. And, you know, maybe it's coming out with just new software for these older phones or making th an iPhone 7, a new iPhone 7 with just a little better hardware with more limited stuff that it's still like just an old phone you're selling, but it's not like a new phone that's just crappy. I think that's a really big problem that Apple's having. I think Apple is starting to struggle with identity and not knowing who they are anymore. They're not the innovative types anymore. They're not the flawless types. So who are they? And I'm just really disappointed in Tim Cook and how he's run this company. I would be so happy if we found somebody to come back and reinvent and reinvigorate Apple because it's been such a great brand. Oh, there's so much I wanted to go to, but I guess I got caught up in my emotions. Think about your branding. It's so important, even for your personal life, not just your career, not, I mean, not just for your businesses or the products that you participate in by buying, but also yourself. You have a brand as well, and how, what you do impacts that. Now, let's go out and be successful together. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. God bless. <laughs>